Today I wanted to do a little video on print and cut, but not quite the usual print and cut. If you want to do a print and cut with a coloured image and overlap them and then just cut around all of them as one piece, it's easy enough to do. There's a slight difference though if what you want to do is have multiple images that you can colour in yourself. So from this point of view, I've put on here, just placed an image of a box that I drew. And this is a PNG. Now before we go any further, I'm going to look at my layers. So I'm going to click on the layers over here on the right hand side. And you can see that I have untitled PNG. I'm going to label that and I'm just going to call it box PNG. Okay, so there we go, that's my box and we can see that it's there in the layers. Now you notice my layers have popped out over here. If I want to put them back down here, then I click on this button on the right hand side. And if I want to get the layer button and box back up, then I click down here and it appears again. And it's really handy being able to have it floating on the screen. So regarding the tracing, and this applies to shortcut slot five, I don't think it applies to shortcut slot four. You might want to check if you've got that. So I'm going to click on the trace button with my image selected and lo and behold, it appears in the window. Now, the thing is, if I were to use this image as it is and trace it, I'll show you the result that I get. And I haven't changed any of the settings. I'm just going to click OK. And I'm going to click on No for that. So here I have my traced image. And you might think, yeah, that's great. You got it. No problem. Well, you have and you haven't. Because if I was to get more than one of these, I'm just going to take this away because I don't need that for the moment. There we go. And I copy and paste it. There we are. Now, you need to understand that this is transparent. That's why you can see the pink background. And I put this lurid pink background in on purpose. Because if you do it with a white background, it's more difficult to realise what's happening. So this is transparent. And the black lines are the things which have the fill. Not... The rest of the design. The lines have been traced so the lines are filled and they will print as black lines which is great that's exactly what I want but if I put this one over that one you see this area here where they're overlapping that's going to print like that. That is not what we want most definitely not what we want. So I'm going to go and undo there we go got my picture back again and I'll undo again because I don't want the trace. So go back to my trace box and this time I'm going to click on blackout and update my preview and as you can see now you've just got a cut line around the entire shape. That's what we want so I'm going to click OK. Now the thing which I think is new in version 5, because I don't think it's in version 4, is this, would you like to continue tracing? I believe you used to have to click out of it and then open it back up again. Now I do want to continue tracing. This time I'm going to click off of the blackout, update the preview so you can see what's going to happen. It's going to trace the lines as normal and I'm going to click OK. I don't want to do any more tracing, so I'll click off that. You might think, oh no, you've just gone and ruined it. I haven't, don't worry. Now what I am going to do is remove, from the point of view, it's much easier for you to see what's going on. I'm going to remove the original PNG and send it to the trash bin. So this is what we've got. And if I click on the little arrow here, we can see I've got a group and I've got the design which is the box, and I have this shadow layer basically. So the shadow layer, what I want to do with that is to go over here to the colour and I want to make the fill colour white. 
et voila, we have exactly what we want. So there is our box. And I'll check that this is grouped, it appears to be. So I can, yeah, I can move it around. So now if I was to duplicate this by copy and pasting, and I have two of these boxes side by side, they're fine. If I overlap them, you can see that the bit in the middle, although it is still theoretically there, it is no longer going to show because this isn't transparent anymore. And so you will be printing off the design that you want to do rather than making a complete and utter mess of it and having this bit which you have to erase bits for. Ugh, who can be bothered with that? So I'm just going to switch off the page colour and you can see that that is what you've got. Now the only thing that you need to do with this is to ensure that your layers have got the correct properties attached to them. So for this layer here, which is the shadow layer, if I go over to my spanner, I've got it on a cut setting. That's fine. That's perfectly all right. This layer here is also at the moment on the cut setting, and I definitely don't want that. I want to put that to a print and cut print. There we go. So now if we look at the preview, on this one, everything is cut lines, which you don't want. And on this one, the black lines are the printable lines and the red line is the cut line. And that is exactly what we want it to be like. So that's how you do it. Now, what do you want to use it for? Well, I've got a project on the go at the moment, which is this one. I'm just going to change my page. Now, this is a straightforward one piece pop up card. And so basically this is one whole piece. This cut line here ends on the sides so that this will fold out in the middle. So it cuts along the top, it cuts along the bottom, but it doesn't cut at the sides. Now there's another way of doing this, and that would just be the inner portion of the card, by the way, you just put an outer sleeve on it. So the second way of doing it is to use, and I've used the same image, with an item strip. And what you do to do this is quite simple. You have your grouped item and you would switch off your drawing and you'd have your lines for your cut and you simply make a strip, join in, union, that's it, job done. And then you can put your image back. And here I have the slotted base. So basically you take that strip and you put it in there, in there, put some sticky tape on the back of it, and that allows you to have a patterned background of a fancy paper or a fancy card if you want it. That's why that is quite a useful one to do. And here I have my various items that I've been using, which I have used the print and cut method on. And I've even got, thanks to Alison, she gave me the idea with my husband's birthday card recently. I have got a box card version as well. Not the pop-up box card, but just a three-dimensional box with the image that will be on the front of it. And that means I can colour in all those images and have a bit of fun. And that's how you do it. Take care now. Bye-bye.